Hello student. Today we will discuss about a new topic that is so coagulant. So coagulant why anticoagulant why we need anticoagulant. So anticoagulants are required to prevent the coagulation process. Simple si baat hai. Coagulation process ko inhibit karne ke liye anticoagulant chahiye. To kyun aisa hamara zarurat kyun hua ki hume anticoagulant ki zarurat pada. Anticoagulant ka zarurat isi liye pada kyunki you know you people know that due to the coagulation there is a formation of thrombus and this thrombus formation can take place even in artery or veins and due to this thrombus formation blockage of artery or vein takes place and due to blockage there are several medical conditions can generated like i, I have discussed in my previous video again i am discussing like myocardial infarction stroke acute coronary syndrome okay venous thromboembolism okay this thrombus formation is very dangerous thing for a human body because it can block your artery or vein or it can interrupt your blood flow so to prevent this coagulation we have a class of drug that prevent the coagulation that is anticoagulant okay this anticoagulant class of drug divided into two categories that is in vivo anticoagulants okay these are divided into two category in vivo and in vitro in vivo and in vitro that is in vivo matlab in living organism or in in vitro matlab in lab bagera in lab case in laboratory you can use this type so again in vivo class of drug again divided into two category first one is parenteral second one is oral again parenteral divided into two category parenteral anticoagulant again divided into category that is indirect thrombin inhibitor direct thrombin inhibitor indirect direct thrombin inhibitor direct thrombin inhibitor okay so indirect thrombin inhibitor mein kaun sa kaun sa drug aata hai like heparin low molecular weight heparin Fonda Perinox, Danaparoid. Okay, so direct acting में कौन सा कौन सा drug आता है? इसको याद रखना lab, lepuridine. लेपिरिडिन आर्गोट्राबन बिभालुरिडिन ओके अगेन कम टू द ओरल द ओरल क्लास ऑफ द ड्रग डिवाइडेड इनटू फोर टाइप्स कोगमारिन डेरिवेटिव दैट इज वारफरिन डाइकोमरल देन 
indent ion derivatives pennant ion okay direct factor 10a inhibitor डायरेक्ट फैक्टर टेन इनिबिटर में आता है रिबोक्सोवन टेन फोर्थ वन इज ओरल डायरेक्ट थ्रोम्बिन इनिबिटर पेरेंट्रल में आया था लैब लेप्यूरिटिन आर्गोट्रोबन रिमेलोरिटिन डायरेक्ट ओ डायरेक्ट ओरल इनिबिटर क्वेश्चन पूछता है वन इज पेरेंटल विच वन इज ओरल डेबिगेट्रन ओके देन इन केस ऑफ इन केस ऑफ इनविट्रो कौन सा कौन सा ड्रग आता है हेपरिन then sodium citrate sodium oxalate these are basically used in laboratory sodium ethereate okay now we'll discuss about detail about heparin first thing is it is basic in nature present in basophil with histamine sorry not basic it is highly electronegative in nature highly electronegative in nature that's why it is strong strongest for body okay it is a polymer of two sulfate dioxide disaccharide polymer of two sulfate disaccharide what are they one is d glucosamine l hydruric acid second one is d glucosamin l glucuronic acid okay then coming to its mechanism of action how it acts it initially activate initially indirectly activate
antithrombin 2 sorry antithrombin 3 then this antithrombin 3 inhibit several clotting factors including factor 10a factor 2a factor 9a factor 11a factor 12a and factor 13a it inhibits these factors okay okay due to this uh, inhibition there is a clotting process get inhibited and the uh, thrombus formation as well as inhibition okay this is the mechanism of action of uh, heparin okay heparin also having antiplatelet activity at higher dose at higher dose it show antiplatelet activity okay so coming to pharmacokinetics a highly ionized molecule okay important drug is point is safe drug during pregnancy we can give it during pregnancy okay so its adverse effect is very much important let us discuss the most common adverse effect is bleeding hematuria indicates the hematuria primarily the fast the urine in blood so so uh, it is uh, says that the hematuria is generally the first sign from the hematuria we can see in there there is a toxicity of um, heparin takes place second is heparin induced thrombocytopenia heparin induced thrombocytopenia third one is alopecia fourth one is osteoporosis okay fifth one is hypersensitive reaction okay so due to this bleeding tendency it is contraindicated in bleeding disorders what are the bleeding disorders includes bleeding disorders includes peptic ulcer abortion severe hypertension okay sub acute bacterial endocarditis
okay these are the contraindication okay next drug is phonox this drug activate antithrombin 3 complex that ultimately inhibit or selectively inactivate factor 10 a selectively factor 10 a ko ye inhibit karta hai okay its subcutaneous administration show 100% bioavailability okay t hap is around 17 hours metabolized in kidney okay that's why contraindicated in kidney failure okay so coming to its dose dose is 5 to 10 mg subcutaneously od okay 5 to 10 mg subcutaneously once a day okay then coming to next drug that is direct thrombin inhibitor in direct thrombin inhibitor one important drug is lepiridine it is a derivative of hirudine hirudine is a natural anticoagulant like heparin in leech leech mein natural anticoagulant ke jaisa kaam karta hai hirudin uski ka derivative hai okay this drug is more uh, preferred over uh, heparin because it so less thrombocytopenia okay less possibility of hypersensitivity reaction hypersensitivity reaction is also less okay then to uh, one important point to discuss here in case of heparin is its antidote antidote so in heparin poisoning one antidote is used that is protamine sulfate protamine sulfate IV hum dete it is basically obtained from fish spawn fish, of, fish spawn is the uh, source okay so its major side effect is it can causes hypersensitivity reaction by release histamine okay then comes to oral anticoagulant so 
so oral anticoagulant acts opposite to vitamin k so you know that vitamin k vitamin k is a fat soluble vitamin which is basically helps in the blood coagulation process so let us know how vitamin k acts vitamin k acts by it causes gamma carboxylation of glutamic residue glutamic residue of factor 3 7 9 10 basically how vitamin k act vitamin a k act by causing gamma carboxylation of it can acts by causing gamma carboxylation of this glutamic residue jo glutamic residue jo factor ka glutamic residue hota hai uska gamma carboxylation karta hai theek hai due to this gamma carboxylation of glutamic residue what it ultimately activates of this factor activates factors that leads to coagulation as i told you that these oral anticoagulant acts the uh, act opposite to vitamin k so its mechanism of action will be it blocks blocks the action of the conversion of gamma carboxylation of glutamic residue of factor 3798 that ultimately inhibits the coagulation process so 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 we can say that the this is the prototype action of warfarin sodium okay so you people have to remember that in case of vitamin k poisoning warfarin sodium is used and vice versa or in ultimately uh, in uh, another way warfarin in case of warfarin poisoning vitamin k is the drug of choice so the such type of drug having the major issue is bleeding okay bleeding is the one of the important issue okay so so from the bleeding we can uh, see that this this drug show toxicity okay so come to its contraindication as it is showing bleeding uh, bleeding so it is also contraindicated in bleeding disorder like i have discussed in heparin heparin uh, heparin portion that is peptic ulcer abortion uh, then other uh, bleeding disorder and one important thing to be uh, noted here is it is contraindicated in pregnancy okay that is contraindicated in pregnancy okay so if we will draw a, a, a difference if we will differentiate between heparin and warfarin please note what are the basic difference between heparin and warfarin first point is acts both in in vivo and in vitro both in vivo and in vitro mein hi act karta hai but in case of warfarin it acts only in vivo okay second point is antidote heparin ka antidote kon hai protamine sulfate iska antidote kon hai vitamin k ye antidote ke bare mein theek hai this is about antidote third point is 
pregnancy it is safe it is unsafe okay fourth point is thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia here is more here less mechanism of action as it is inhibit factor 2 2 10 9 11 12 13 all are related to extrinsic factor so it, sorry extrinsic uh, intrinsic pathway so it inhibit only intrinsic pathway because a, in extrinsic pathway seven factor seven is used intrinsic pathway so what are the factors that inhibited factor 9 factor 9 factor 10 factor 11 factor 12 okay then factor 9 uh, factor 10 factor 11 factor 12 then factor 13 sub activated form okay 9 and factor 2 sorry factor 2 but in case of warfarin inhibits both intrinsic and extrinsic pathway okay what are the factors to be inhibited 3 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 you people know that factor 7 is associated with extrinsic pathway and factor 9 is associated with intrinsic pathway okay and factor 10 is common okay these are the basic difference that uh, we can about heparin tell about heparin and warfarin okay this okay this is act in both in vivo and in vitro it is vivo act in in vivo so it is it antidote is protamine sulfate where it is antidote it is safe okay. it is safe in pregnancy but warfarin is unsafe in pregnancy but uh, heparin causes thrombocytopenia more it causes less or we can say that ha uh, less then next point is and uh, next point is inhibit the intrinsic pathway only intrinsic pathway only intrinsic pathway only but it inhibit both intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway all about anticoagulant all about anticoagulant class thank you